shares the productive potential of the... When it comes to their royals, the British aren't ones to skimp on tradition. On Wednesday, Queen Elizabeth didn't disappoint. For all you non-Brits, Here's a guide to the glorious pomp and circumstance surrounding her annual speech to Parliament. As she does every year, the Queen is escorted by the household cavalry from Buckingham Palace to Westminster in a horse-drawn carriage. But first, as a precautionary measure, the yeomen of the guard conduct a ceremonial search of Westminster's cellars for gunpowder, presumably. Guy Fox, anyone? And in keeping with tradition, a member of Parliament is held hostage at Buckingham some leverage to ensure the Queen's safe return. Now, upon Her Majesty's arrival to Westminster in her Diamond Jubilee State coach, she throws on the Imperial State crown, along with a special velvet robe, and heads to her gilded throne. Once she takes her seat, the Lord Great Chamberlain makes a signal to the gentleman usher of the Black Rod. As the Queen's messenger, the Black Rod heads to the House of Commons to summon its members to the House of Lords. Per tradition, the door is first slammed in his face. Approaching the Commons not-so-subtle reminder of the House of Commons' independence from the monarchy. Not since 1642, when King Charles I tried to arrest five members of Parliament, has a monarch set foot in the lower house. But back to the Black Rod. To gain admittance, he knocks not once, but three times. Mr. Speaker, the Queen commands this honourable house to attend Her Majesty immediately in the House of Peers. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, my government will legislate in the interests of everyone in our country. If the Queen sounds bored, that's kind of the point. To indicate her neutrality, she reads the speech in monotone. Not a word of which, by the way, she wrote herself. David Cameron's government penned it. This speech, her 62nd, ran just over eight minutes. I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your councils. And with that, the Queen made her grand exit, and lawmakers went to work debating the policies and proposed legislation. So really, the whole affair isn't unlike the President's State of the Union address. You know, minus the horse-drawn carriage and men in funny hats. If only. For Newsy, I'm Elizabeth Hagedorn.